And here's another. Carrie has to choose the lingerie least likely to come apart while being chewed. You've got nylon, you got spandex, you got cotton, and uh, I need to test and see which one of these are gonna be the best for the crocodiles to be able to hold on to. With the different stocking stuffed, Carrie takes a scalpel and makes like a crocodile tooth. I think I'm going with the 100% uh, cotton fishnet stockings. Adam and Jamie are trying to get a handle on the Hindenburg blades. Wow! Was the airship's metallic paint to blame? The paint on this panel matches the one on the doomed airship. It contains aluminum and iron oxide, two compounds that combine to create explosive thermite. Will they get a reaction? Adam puts flame to the frame. Go. No thermite reaction, no intense heat. In fact, it takes five and a half minutes for the panel to be consumed. That's almost twice as long as the aluminum coated cotton. It's almost identical to the cloth by itself. Hmm. Wow. Hang on, guys. Don't write off this myth yet. That was one little panel. The Hindenburg was covered in thousands of square feet of material. Could there be a better boom on a bigger scale? I mean, maybe there's some crazy amount that could yield an energetic reaction, but it's not this amount. Obviously, the Hindenburg's designers didn't set out to coat their creation in rocket fuel. Those who pan the paint theory say the aluminum and iron oxide couldn't have formed thermite because the compounds weren't mixed that way. The recipe was completely different. So that's got the Mythbusters curious. What would happen if you did paint pure thermite on the skin? It's more like a paste than a paint, but uh, I think we can smear it on. Next up, whoa, mega dope. This is just total worst case scenario. Can you actually make thermite in a dope formulation? Be careful when you light it. Adam ignites the panel. Time it. Not exactly the pyrotechnic display we might have expected. They start discussing plan B when suddenly. <laughs> Deuteronomy. <laughs> OK, wait. Well, that's thermite. You got that right. Wow. Once the mega dope ignited, the panel was consumed in just 20 seconds. That was dramatically different. That was totally amazing. Well, I tell you, that's the first evidence I've seen yet that there might actually be something to this myth. Because that's the kind of burn I think of when I think about the Hindenburg going up. This was not what was on the Hindenburg. We have yeah. to make that clear because this was just like over the top crazy. The concentration of thermite in there was uh, thermite to dope was maybe like 75% thermite. <laughs> and they wouldn't have, in any stretch of the imagination, coated the Hindenburg with something like that. So you burned the skin samples, but you know, the Hindenburg was filled with 200,000 cubic meters of hydrogen. Well, let's burn some skin in the presence of hydrogen, see what it does. The newsreel shows the Hindenburg engulfed by fire. Yet high school science tells us hydrogen burns with a near invisible flame. So what are we seeing in the disaster footage? Is it the skin burning and not the gas? Adam will burn some hydrogen to see what the flame looks like. He takes a cylinder of 100% pure hydrogen and makes an enormous Bunsen burner. That's an orange burn, baby. The hydrogen definitely burns orange, but it is extremely low visibility in contrast to the newsreel footage in which the flame is clearly visible. Now, eyewitnesses said it burned orange, but it's a lot more visible than this was. One thing's for sure, hydrogen burns like nobody's business.